from Petro A. Times Square. The tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology. This is the Starship Vlog. I'm Buckfield. Stephen Hawking, speaking at Google's Zeitgeist Conference in the UK, said, How can we understand the world in which we find ourselves? What is the nature of reality? Traditionally, these are questions for philosophy, but philosophy is dead. Philosophers have not kept up with modern developments in science, particularly physics. There's a lot of criticism like that from the top of the physics community. Claims that philosophy doesn't collect experimental data, that it's useless to the working physicist, and so on. Not surprising, really, given that the first law of philosophy is that for every philosopher, there is an equal and opposite philosopher. The second law states they're both wrong. In 2012, physicist Lawrence Krauss claimed that, quote, science progresses and philosophy doesn't, and Neil deGrasse Tyson infamously echoes such opinions. The philosopher believes they are actually asking deep questions about nature. You are distracted by your questions so that you cannot move forward. And you derail yourself. You think are important because philosophy class tells you this. And you can't even cross the street because you're distracted. This is like listening to creationists repeatedly mischaracterizing evolutionary biology when biologists keep correcting them. Our vast, infinite universe has been the source of questions since the dawn of mankind. But all those questions can be answered quite easily. The answer is, God did it. And what about the sun? God made it. Ants? God made them. Dogs? God made them. Trees? God made them. Gay people? God didn't make them. Everything? God made it. Well. We were supposed to do six more episodes, but we seem to have answered all of your questions in the first two minutes. I tend to think creationists are Mother Nature's way of lying about her age. Scoping the domain of science is a related but not internal part of science itself. If our goal is maximizing success, criticism of philosophy or domain scoping should come from experts in those fields. Physicist Sean Carroll points out scientists are not experts on this. The quest for absolute clarity of description and rigorous understanding is a crucially important feature of the philosophical method. Science often gives us models of the world that are more than good enough in terms of getting answers that fit the data within error bars, even though they may not be completely coherent or well-defined. But that's not really what drives us to do science in the first place. We shouldn't be happy to do well enough or merely fit the data. We should be striving to understand how the world really works. Project management relies on clarity because expert clarity is needed to ensure efforts to accomplish goals succeed. Project management also functions to detect failure early and minimize downside costs while maximizing whatever benefits can be saved. Historians and philosophers of science study the practices and norms of science that work best and are most successful over the long term. We are well advised to learn from their research if we want to focus our resources in ways that have proven most successful in the past. Good plans will need clarity on what we mean by reality, space-time, and so on in order to navigate those waters competently. For now, we are going to begin simply by recognizing that success and failure of the past provide the best clues to avoid risks and improve our chances of success in the future. For that, philosophers and historians of science and physics are the experts. To help our community succeed in this, the next Starship Congress is scheduled to include an introduction to the history and philosophy of scientific revolutions, their structure, distinguishing features, and some key factors that can reasonably be expected from any faster-than-light enabling physics model. Our Starship pop culture this time is a trailer for the crowdfunded film Leviathan. Thanks for watching.